Welcome to my channel. So today is a Q&A. Guys, the last time I made a Q&A, you guys loved it. A few of you commented. Some of, a few of you also subscribed. So I figured you guys love it. So I'm going to do it again. So here we are to be doing another Q&A. So ask you guys to send me questions on Instagram. And there's been a lot of questions. I'm going to try my best to answer as, as many as I can. So without chatting too much let's get into the video so the first question is how much do you weigh i weigh 62 kg that's my weight now i weigh myself three days ago and i weigh 62 kg so the next one is what brings you joy um guys i'm not going to mention anybody's name a lot of them requested to me i'm not much, so i'm not going to mention anybody's name so what brings me joy um being able to lead people to God, being able to lead people to Christ is what brings me joy. Honestly, when I talk about Jesus to people, when I talk about God to people and they and they agree to work with God, in fact, it brings me a lot of joy in my life. So currently, whenever I'm able to lead people to God, whenever I'm able to lead people to Christ, it's what brings me joy. The next one is, have you ever cheated in a romantic relationship? No, I have never cheated in a romantic relationship. Do you enjoy doing YouTube? Yes, YouTube is kind of a way of relaxing for me. You know, I'm, I'm someone that works a lot, I learn a lot. So YouTube is a way for me to get away from my boring life. So I enjoy doing YouTube. It's a kind of, it's a, it's a more like, it's a hobby for me. So it's a way for me to relax from my boring life. So I really enjoy doing it too. Do you struggle with anxiety? Yes, I struggle with anxiety. I'm someone that can live with a people that makes a lot of noise. Um, if you are very loud, I can't live with you, especially the same building. If you talk a lot, I can't live with you. If you always find reason, to be talking, talking, talking unnecessarily. I can't live with, I can't live with a person with that character. So, uh, I'll, so I'll say it's a form of anxiety. I, I can't live in a super noisy environment. So if you are someone that's always finding reason to talk, you know, it's not like saying things that are important or things that are beneficial to life. Just like talking unnecessarily, you know, I have anxiety around that. And I also I think I have Another form of anxiety, I think it's social anxiety because you know this thing, especially those of us in Africa, if you know this festival that the kings uh, do, you know they have a time, they have a season that they've set to doing this festival and, and during this time that place get very, very super noisy. You know, I'm comfortable watching it from a distance, but being in the midst of the crowd during that festive occasion no, so on that regard, I think I have a social anxiety. I can't be, I can't be in a super noisy environment with a lot of crowd. No, I can watch it from a distance. I'll be okay with that. But being in the midst of a crowd, no. So I think it's also a form of social anxiety. So, um, that is me. I, growing up, I never really recognized that until when I was grown. So, I have a social anxiety. Can you give me your opinion on why men go to women and come back and go again? This one, I think it talks more on them than you. It's not it's not like there's something wrong with you, but it says a lot about them than you, the woman, or you, the female. So, it's more. I also think it's more like you don't know what they want, or, or they haven't really matured in life. So, it talks more about them than you. If, I'm also going to say that if you think there's something you need to do some correction you need to do about life try and do it but if you've done everything you think you can and and still men goes to you guys it says a lot about them than you so 
it's not really about there's nothing wrong with you guys you are just as beautiful as you are so it says a lot about them than you so there's not really nothing wrong with you so don't kill yourself over that how do i become a good friend i would say a good friend is someone you can be vulnerable with someone you can call in times of need someone who can advise you someone who can help you when you are going through a difficult situation and who's not going to judge you so it's so to be a good friend you have to make sure your friends can be vulnerable with you they can pour their heart out to you without feeling like mm, am i safe can i really trust her can i really rely on her is she reliable so so make sure people can be vulnerable with you i'm talking about your friends for me also i'll say that for a friend to be good friend to me whenever i'm wrong and you're pointing it out to me it's always going to be with love it's always going to come from a place of love so if you are correcting your friend and then it's you are doing it with love it's coming from a place of love then you can be classified as a good friend so make sure that whenever you are also correcting your we, we are not perfect human beings we make mistakes all the time so when you are pointing out a wrong doing to your friend it should always come from a place of love you should always do it with love this is what makes you a good friend what is a dream that you always had that has come into fruition i would say my work with god you know your work with god is not an end on its own it's a journey you never get to a point where you say i'm a perfect person working with god there's nothing more for me to learn there's nothing more god god, god never you know, God never ceases to reveal, so you keep on learning, you keep on learning, you keep on improving. So, um, what I'm go how I'm going to answer this question is, I'm not someone that's always worked with God. Um, I, I always, growing up, right from infancy, I've always admired the poor that we're working with God, working with God. I had always wanted to do that, but I could, I didn't know how. So it had always been a dream of mine growing up. So now that I've been able to do that and I'm still in the pro I'm still in the process of doing it, it's like a dream come true for me. Because this was my dream as a kid growing up and not being able to do it then and now being able to work with God through Christ, it's like a dream come true for me. Because we all know a dream is something we've always wanted to achieve and this thing has been something I had always wanted to achieve as a kid and growing up. So I'm at a place in life where I'm working with God. It's like a dream come true for me. I'm still learning a lot in my in my in my journey with Christ. So, so uh, I've come a long way. Looking back, I, I I realized that I can see that I didn't know anything. I was living the life anyhow. But now it's not the same as it used to be. So to work with God. At the place that I am right now in my life with God. Because before I couldn't do it and I wasn't doing it. So it's like a dream come true for me. How do you feel about being over 30 and still not married? I feel indifferent. I don't feel bad about it. Because in life things happen to people at the right time. When it's time for it to happen, it will happen. So why do you need to feel bad about it? There's no need. Things happen to people at the right time that it's supposed to happen to people. So there's no need to feel any other way. Let's, I don't see why there should be a feeling attached to that. So, and those of us that believe in God, you have to trust in God. You have to put your faith, keep the faith alive, and it will happen in God's own appointed time. So, honestly, guys, I feel indifferent about it. I feel indifferent about it. God will surely make it happen. So, that's my take on it, honestly. I'm not going to say much, but but I can also say that I'm at a point in my life where, I, where I am the happiest that I can be. He makes all things beautiful in this time. So you keep the faith alive and keep trusting in God. And it's what happened when it's supposed to happen. What is your take on females who love to learn and achieve higher levels in their academic and professional careers? It is a good thing. Guys, that is what I would say. If you are female and you've been gifted, it's not everyone that have high IQ. So if you have been blessed with high IQ and you love to learn and go higher in your academic and professional life, why not do it? You are, I 100% I support those that, have, that, those that do it. You've been blessed with these gifts, why not explore it? If you're a woman and you happens to have high IQ, 
and you want to go higher in your academic and professional life you have my, my support go for it guys do whatever it takes because you have the gift you have to explore it but if you're also someone that loves social life i would advise you not to do it at the expense of your social life no don't do it at the expense of social life there should be a fine balance between the two so explore your academic and professional life go higher that you can go go the highest you can go and then focus on also your social life don't go it's supposed to be a balance don't don't let it be like this no higher academic and professional life then you have no social life no it's supposed to be a balance so go for it but not at the expense of your social life if it's truly something that you want you can be the happiest person you can do so 100% support that how do i stop myself from being jealous about a friend's success that i haven't achieved yet in my life jealousy it's a canker first accept that whatever the person has achieved in life you are equally good in a different aspect of your life that this said person may not even have reached yet you may have attained success in a different aspect of life that the person hasn't even attained for example a friend may be good academically the other friend may also be good in terms of arts so a friend may achieve success in academic field someone may be a successful artist if you look at that it will help you from feeling jealousy that you always feel you know we are all different we have different gifts and different talents so for you to be focusing you know this thing happen when you are focusing on that person instead of focusing on your life if your attention is on your friend's life instead of your life that's that's where you're going to feel jealousy because how can someone's success make you feel insecure or jealous it's because you are focusing on a person and not focusing on yourself look look at your life you realize that there's a lot of success you have attained that you are not recognizing you are just focusing on your friends instead of focusing on your life. We are different. We are different in different ways. God has given us different gifts and different talent. We all can be good at one thing. This person can be good here. The other person can be good there. So, if the person has achieved success, whatever your friend has achieved doesn't make you an inferior person or less of a human being. You are also equally good. You have also attained success in a different aspect of life, which this self friend may not have attained. So guys, this thing with jealousy, it's always good to focus on your life, not a friend's life. It's good to be happy for a friend, for his or her achievement. But not at the expense of realizing your blessing in your life. You do, if you do that, you realize that you feel fulfilled. Your life is not just a failure, you're not a failure. You've been able to do something with your life. Whenever that feeling is coming, always focus on your life. Look, for instance, me, my girl, look here. What are the successes that I've achieved? Where was I about five years ago, about ten years ago? Where am I now? That the things that I've been able to do, and you realize that you wouldn't be having time to be focusing on your friend's success because you are lost in your own success, and you always be happy. And in this way, so do you realize that since you are happy for whatever you've been able to achieve in life, you'll be happy for that person with your friend. You'll be able, to, you'll be able to feel that. That happiness you'll be able to transform that happiness from you to that person because you've been able you've come a long way you able to achieve certain things you couldn't be you couldn't have achieved you are successful uh, your life you are not a failure you've been able to do something with your life so you in that feeling will automatically trans transfer to that friend of yours who's, who has also achieved a level of success in his or her life and you'll be happy for that person so guys always you guys always stop focusing on a friend instead of your life you are also equally successful in a different aspect of life that God has blessed you with. For instance, a friend has reached one million dollars on YouTube. The fact that a person has reached one million dollars on YouTube doesn't make you a less of a human being or an inferior person. Search so within your life and you will also realize that you've got a lot of successful stories in your life. I'm really happy about and this will help you to be happy for that friend who's, who has reached that level. So whenever that feeling starts creeping in, guys, start counting your blessings. Start counting your success and you realize that you'll be happy and you'll be happy for that friend. The last but not the least, you are a minimalist and don't do excessive shopping. Yes, this assumption is true. I'm a minimalist person. I don't do excessive shopping. So, you are correct from Angie. This is the only name I will mention. So, 
so that's it for today's q a thank you guys so much for your questions um so i'm ending it right here don't forget to subscribe don't forget to share this video don't forget to do anything you need to do and thank you guys so much for your questions and i'll see you guys in the next video bye